Um, John, so the call with BD and the president today was the first since Christmas. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about why the delay, especially because they were talking so frequently over the fall? And then also on BD, does the president think a two-state solution is possible with BD in the office? You know, on the modalities of the call and the frequencies, as I've said before, they will talk as appropriate. This was deemed uh, by both leaders as, the, as the, the best opportunity for yet another call, Colleen, and I have no doubt that there will be additional calls going forward, clearly. Um, the President still believes in the promise and the possibility of a two-state solution. Now, he recognizes that's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of leadership, there in the region particularly, on both sides of the issue. Um, and the United States uh, stands firmly committed to, to eventually seeing that outcome right now. And, and we're well, obviously we're talking to them actively about post-conflict Gaza and what governance there needs to look like and the importance of uh, an independent Palestinian state for long-term security, not just for the Palestinian people, but for the Israeli people as well. Currently, of course, we're rightly focused, as I said in the opening statement, on making sure Israel has what it continues to has, have what it needs to defend itself. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, John. Um, so you continue to reiterate the administration's policy that you support a two-state solution. Senator Elizabeth Warren says that if Netanyahu opposes that, then we need to question why we are supporting the Netanyahu government. So why is the U.S. supporting a government that opposes U.S. policy? I'm not sure what the context means uh, of, of supporting the government, but let's just take it, I'm going to assume, it's meant in the context of this war they're fighting. Um, it is certainly supporting the Isra we're certainly supporting the Israeli governments to defend themselves, but it's really bigger than that. We j it's about supporting the Israeli people's right to exist, right to be a nation. I mean, again, you don't have to look any further than the 2017 manifesto of Hamas to see what their ultimate plans are. They want to wipe the country off the face of the, uh, off, off the map. So we're defending Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, the Israeli people get to decide who represents them, who their elected officials are. We don't decide that. Um, and we will always work with whoever the Israeli people decide to put in, uh, into power and, and government. We'll always uh, work with them, regardless of the differences, uh, maybe in, on, on political issues. Uh, they chose this government. This is the government that is uh, in charge of conducting warfare against Hamas. We're going to make sure that they have what they need, in addition to making sure, as I said in the opening statement, that we're doing everything we can to alleviate humanitarian suffering in Gaza. Warren's not alone in expressing these concerns. Is the president worried that, given um, what Netanyahu has said about opposing a Palestinian state, it could complicate the efforts to pass the supplemental? The president's under uh, two things, and under no illusions of how uh, elusive a, a two-state solution has been um, and how much hard work there's going to be ahead for all of us. Uh, to try to get there. Uh, on, the, on the supplemental, again, I don't want to negotiate here in public. Uh, we believe that we're making progress here in terms of working in a bipartisan way with, uh, with senators. Um, and uh, we'll see where this goes, but, uh, uh, but uh, the, the president comes away from the meeting with congressional leaders uh, the other day. Largely, that was meeting about Ukraine and right. bipartisan support on Ukraine, but that they understand uh, uh, the, the urgency of, us, of supporting Israel as well. Thanks, John. Thanks.